Say chair. Thank you. So, hi. Uh, today we are going to write an AM FM SSB receiver in the C language. And uh, how many of you have any experience in the C language? Oh, quite much. Oh, great. So, uh, we are going to write an SDR receiver software. And uh, you, will, you can find the code on GitHub uh, that we are going to write today. And uh, I've uh, I've printed it on uh, paper and handed it out. I hope uh, everyone will be able to get one because it fits on uh, two pages. So it's, um, it fits on a single sheet. And um, yeah, uh, so what, uh, what does this code do? Uh, first, uh, we have an input signal somewhere in the spectrum and uh, but, I mean, and we have a signal of interest in the spectrum somewhere and we have to move it to the center by frequency transition and shifting. And uh, then we reject anything else uh, and uh, do a decimation and, uh, and demodulate that signal. And there we have the, our audio output. So uh, let's start to do it. So fire up a text editor and uh, include a few things. That's all we need and uh, that will be the main function and this program will have three parameters, the uh, sender frequency, the frequency of the channel to be received, and uh, the modulation. And if uh, it doesn't get the three parameters, then it will exit. Okay? And that will be the infinite loop in which the processing will take place. And uh, how this will work, uh, we'll use an RTL SDR as the input. And, um, We'll, we'll issue this comment in common line, so uh, we don't uh, take care about interfacing the audio card and the uh, SDR hardware much. We use the standard input and output, and um, so we'll have to read the uh, the IQ signal. I mean, the signal that corresponds to the wireless uh, part of the wireless spectrum from the standard input. So what does uh, what does this uh, signal look like, which uh, comes from the RTL SDR tool? We, uh, we try to push it into a hex dump and uh, check how it looks like. So this is the IQ, IQ. These are uh, two bytes, are one complex sample, and um, that's how it goes on. And uh, this is what, uh, this is what, uh, a complex, a, a stream of complex samples looks like. So that's how to imagine. So the longest axis is the time. And that's um, a complex sinusoid, uh, kind of uh, sine wave, uh, the complex version of the sine wave. Yeah, and uh, this is how, what noise looks like if it's complex. Yeah. So uh, let's go on and. Uh, and read that uh, input from there to SDR. And uh, then, uh, so we, we read the uh, two bytes from the standard, standard input and convert that to complex float, which is available in C99 standard. And uh, we, we will exit the program if uh, the RTL SDR tool exits. And uh, yeah, um, next thing, uh, let's, let's do the frequency translation. So, how we do it? We do it very similar to how, um, how we would do it in a super heterodyne radio. But, uh, yeah, so we have a, a complex signal as the input and as the output as well. And, uh, and also the signal of the local oscillator is complex. And we, so we uh, multiply the input signal and the local oscillator signal. What we see here is uh, what, uh, what the output would be if the input is uh, sinusoid. And uh, we see that it's, uh, it's also sinusoid, but with a different frequency. So this is what happened in the frequency domain. And uh, yeah, this is why it works. So uh, we just... Uh, rotate the input sample by the phase of the LO sample. And uh, 
Oh, so made an animation for that. So the blue is the yellow sample, and the red is the input sample, which gets rotated. Okay, so that happens. So uh, let's uh, get to pseudo code. Um, this is uh, this is the phase difference between the uh, LO samples. Uh, that's how much we shift. So uh, we initialize the phase of the local oscillator to zero and increment that in each step. And uh, then we just uh, multiply the input with the LO sample. So let's code that. Uh, that's the D-shift phase. We've seen the previous slide uh, for which we need the sampling rate and uh, initialize the phase to zero and uh, increment. We need to uh, normalize the phase to fit the range uh, zero and two pi uh, because it's floating point and we lose precision otherwise. And then this, this is where the shift happens itself. Uh, so we multiply the input together with the hello sample, okay? Uh, and let's write it out to the standard output just to test that this works. And okay, so another thing that's important that here we don't have to take care about images like in a super heterodyne uh, radio. So uh, there's uh, well, if we shift like this in DSP, and I won't go into theory why, but what goes out on one edge of the spectrum comes in from the other edge. So uh, again, this is what I wanted to show. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I've tested that in GN radio and uh, against, the, uh, against the block that does the same in GN radio. And uh, we see that uh, the smaller X2 uh, actually does the same. It both uh, shifted um, sign to uh, minus 60 kilohertz. Okay, but uh, we have some spurs over there, and that's because uh, the input is unsigned a bit. So uh, we lose precision when converting. And um, that also means uh, losing dynamic range. So let's generalize. And um, that's what we do. Uh, for that, we use it. Frequency, we, we use a decimating fear filter, so finite impulse response filter, uh, which does this. So I will explain. Um, we have uh, the last given number of input samples. We have a set of uh, filter taps, which is the same in each iteration. And what these taps are, these, these are numbers. This is a vector of complex numbers. So what, what is this? Uh, that uh, decides uh, how this filter will look like. So uh, whether it will be a low pass filter, a band pass filter, a uh, high pass filter, what will be the cutoff frequency. So we have to, we'll have to design those steps. And uh, we'll get, uh, uh, yeah. So what we do is that we multiply together the input samples with the filter taps, the corresponding ones, and uh, then uh, we add up the results and get one output. And then we shift the input samples, but here uh, I mean that we uh, take out the last one and push in a new one. So again, um, let's see, let's multiply, uh, sum up and shift. So about uh, the next step will be the decimation. And um, we, can, uh, we can do that because we have already filtered out, I mean, rejected any other signals. We only have the signal of interest and don't have to take care about aliasing or so. But what if we just don't calculate uh, each, uh, up, so we only calculate one out of uh, five outputs, then uh, it's much easier. So, so we will, uh, that, so we don't uh, take uh, that much CPU time for uh, calculating samples that we would drop. Um, so uh, we, we will shift the uh, input uh, samples by, or the input sample vector by uh, five instead of one. Uh, okay, and uh, so let's write code for that. 
uh, that's the decimation factor, which is five in this case. Um, the, what did I do? Yeah, uh, we need um, output rate to calculate that. And uh, we don't take care about the taps and the taps line yet, but we allocate buffers for that. Decimate buffer will contain the last uh, given number of input samples. And um, we'll need that counter later. There we uh, push the last uh, input samples into the decimate buffer. And uh, that's the part that only fires one time of, uh, out of five. Uh, because of the counter, and uh, there we do the decimation. I mean, sorry, I mean the filtering. Uh, so this is the add and the multiply operations, and uh, there we. Uh, that's the part where we shift the uh, input buffer by five samples. Okay, and um, that uh, again. Let's write it out to the output. So what the taps should be, because uh, without that, we uh, don't have the filter yet. Uh, we are, there, there are several ways to design a uh, finite impulse response filter, but one way is uh, using the fact that the sync function, which looks like this, is uh, the inverse Fourier transform of the rect function, which looks like this, and uh, actually this looks like uh, the ideal low pass filter. Uh, characteristic. So this will be the formula we use to design this filter. And um, the FC, FC is the uh, cutoff frequency. And so what should be the taps length? The, the longer filter uh, takes more CPU time to calculate, but it, uh, uh, it has a um, sharper characteristic. So uh, we have a formula to design um, or to calculate the number of taps required for given transition boundaries. And uh, one, uh, one thing we also have to do is um, that um, we have to uh, apply a window function to the taps because uh, with that we can uh, decrease the uh, pacebend ripple and uh, the and increase the um, rejection uh, in the stop band. So, yeah, this is the unwindowed and the windowed version with the Hamming window. This is the formula for the Hamming window. So, yeah. And we also have to make uh, this filter curve uh, look asymmetric for our uh, SSB uh, operation because uh, we want to uh, we want to reject uh, the other sideband, and for that we we'll, uh, redo this. So this is the same what we've done for our uh, for shifting the signal uh, in the frequency domain to the center. So right now we apply this to the taps, and uh, yeah. Uh, so let's uh, let's do it need some more parameters, like the bandwidth of the SSB signal and the transition bandwidth. And uh, that's, the, that's the window function. And this is the modulation, that's our parameter. And here we calculate the taps length, which will be odd. And we, we need it to be odd. And that's the pipe one at the end. But otherwise, it's the formula I've uh, shown a few slides ago. And uh, that's the index of the middle tap which will need special treatment later. And this is the cutoff frequency. Um, this is the shift uh, that we apply on the taps. This is for the shift, the D shift, or D phi. OK. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the middle tap that needs spe special treatment. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the place where we calculate all the other taps. This is the sink. This is the window. and. Uh, yeah, this is the shift. And uh, we also apply a normalization on the taps, okay? Because, uh, yeah, and, the, and there uh, we write, uh, write the taps out to a file, uh, which we will 
loading the octave, GN octave, and uh, we'll be able to see if the transmission curve. So this is how the transmission curve looks like for an LSB, uh, if we start the program in LSB mode. And yeah, we don't understand yet what this is, but we just have to swap the spectrum, which uh, could be done in octave, but I done in paint, <laughs> because it was easier at this time. And uh, there we see that, yeah, it's, uh, it will filter uh, out the, uh, I mean, it will paste the uh, negative sideband and uh, reject the positive sideband. So it looks valid. And uh, also, let's test it in uh, GNU radio. This should be a video, yeah. Uh, we just, uh, what we see here is that we have a sine wave uh, as the input, and if we move the sine out of, out of the basement, then uh, it will be rejected. So that's what we wanted to see. And um, we can also feed noise into the, uh, in, into this uh, program and see what the uh, what will be at the filter output, and this is uh, for AMFM, this is for LSB, and for USB. So it will be similar to the transmission curve. I just uh, forgot to check the peak hold. Okay, so uh, let's demodulate. Uh, oh, th this was the hardest hard part until this, I think, uh, because. Uh, AM demodulation is like this. So uh, we just take the amplitude of the complex sample. Then we, uh, for SSB, we can do this, but only if we have removed the other sideband. Uh, and uh, so this is the reason for that, that we uh, convert uh, the exponential to a cosine and uh, also, if it's uh, it's in the negative range, and okay, so visually, uh, this is this is more easy to understand. Uh, if we don't have anything and the other sideband, then it's okay. But if we have uh, something like that blue signal, interfering signal, then this will be added up to the uh, our signal in signal of interest. Uh, yeah, that's what we do by this uh, taking the real part and. This is, uh, this is the FM demodulation, uh, where we just, uh, we just differentiate the phase of the signal. And uh, let's go this. So this is the demodulator output, which will be our audio sample, hopefully. And this, what, this is what happens if the modulation is FM, frequency modulation. And uh, that's where we calculate the uh, in the phase of the current sample. And uh, so this way we can do the differentiation and the D5 will be the, uh, will be the output. Uh, we also have to normalize it to uh, the range you want, minus pi and plus pi. And uh, okay, we, we uh, so we have to, uh, change the range to minus sharp max and plus sharp max, I think, or, yeah. And uh, then uh, we do the same for the uh, AM. So we just, um, the formula is taking the absolute value of the uh, decimated uh, signal and uh, transform it to the range of the uh, short type and this is the one line for the SSB, okay, taking the real part and write it out. And uh, yeah, we are ready. So we have a working receiver at this point. Uh, as some note, yeah, it, uh, it, uh, it's important how we compile it. So if we compile it with the default parameters, then the throughput is not much. Uh, and if we use the minus O fast and minus MR native, which was suggested by my friend Jolt, then uh, it, the throughput gets uh, 10 times as the one before. And uh, that's good because uh, um, it uses the, the special instructions in the CPU and it's much faster. Okay. And uh, 
have a video about how it works. When we, I, I've uh, tried it with um, an FM transmission and um, transmitted with my uh, uh -huh. with my um, handheld radio. Uh, very weak. Okay, uh, you can try it. You can try it at home <laughs> uh, if you uh, compile and run it. So there are the instructions, uh, and uh, also built a, a flow graph to test it with uh, an artificial SSB signal from GN Radio. Maybe uh, that's that's also very weak. Okay, so actually, uh, you can see one thing is missing from this project, and that's the auto gain control. And uh, so it's it's actually uh, a homework for those who are interested to uh, for some do it yourself because this uh, project works without an auto gain control, but sometimes the audio is very weak. Uh, and uh, so you, you can find some documentation about the AGC block in the GNU radio, and uh, uh, you could uh, use the formula there to implement an AGC. And yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to my friends, uh, Jolt, Adam, and Janos for uh, reviewing the code and uh, the presentation. and. Uh, so making some great suggestions, so thank you very much, and also thank you very much for listening, and uh, uh, I'm just open to the questions. Hackers to the microphone, come on. Will this be on your website, the, do the documents and things? Uh, yeah, the, the code is already over there, and uh, I, I think the presentation will be uh, just as the others on YouTube at the SDRA channel. Any more questions? Any more questions? So then, Andras, thank you very much. Thank you.